December 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 12 from the Old Testament. The one who loves discipline loves knowledge, but the one who hates reproof is stupid. A good person obtains favor from the Lord, but the Lord condemns a person with wicked schemes. No one can be established through wickedness, but a righteous root cannot be moved. A noble wife is the crown of her husband, but the wife who acts shamefully is like rottenness in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just, the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait to shed innocent blood, but the words of the upright will deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and perish, but the righteous household will stand. A person is praised in accordance with his wisdom, but the one who has a twisted mind is despised. Better is a person of humble standing who nevertheless has a servant than one who pretends to be somebody important yet has no food. A righteous person cares for the life of his animal, but even the most compassionate acts of the wicked are cruel. The one who works his field will have plenty of food, but whoever chases daydreams lacks wisdom. The wicked person desires a stronghold, but the righteous root endures. The evil person is ensnared by the transgression of his speech, but the righteous person escapes out of trouble. A person will be satisfied with good from the fruit of his words, and the work of his hands will be rendered to him. The way of a fool is right in his own opinion, but the one who listens to advice is wise. A fool's annoyance is known at once but the prudent overlooks an insult. The faithful witness tells what is right, but a false witness speaks deceit. Speaking recklessly is like the thrust of a sword, but the words of the wise bring healing. The one who tells the truth will endure forever, but the one who lies will last only for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. The righteous do not encounter any harm, but the wicked are filled with calamity. The Lord abhors a person who lies, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. The shrewd person conceals knowledge, but foolish people publicize folly. The diligent person will rule, but the slothful will become a slave. Anxiety in a person's heart weighs him down, but an encouraging word brings him joy. The righteous person is cautious in his friendship but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy person does not roast his prey, but personal possessions are precious to the diligent. In the path of righteousness there is life, but another path leads to death. God, I have always struggled with not being good enough. Uh, I, in the family I was raised in, I was the oldest child, and I always had to be the perfect child. I'm not saying my family put that on me, but it was just a totality of circumstances. I had to be the perfect child. I had to be the good child, the good student. Uh, I got excellent grades. I was in all of these clubs. Uh, I did band. And I was always really good at everything I did because I had to be. <laughs> I remember always being mortified if a teacher would call me out on something I had gotten wrong or if I got something wrong on a test they didn't even have to call me out in person and growing into an adult that carried over to my working life I was always petrified getting called into my supervisor's office or boss's office and having them tell me I wasn't doing a perfect job is that funny nobody's perfect but I I just that just bothered me so much that anybody would find anything wrong with me I've gotten better at it but I, I still struggle with it uh, I would say for the most part all the areas of my life are pretty good in that area I seek advisement in many of those areas uh, from trusted mentors I have and accountability partners but the one area that I still really struggle with is relationships. I want that person to think that we are perfect. I'm not talking like boyfriend, girlfriend, but any relationship I have, I just want them to be happy with me, happy to me. Nah, so I still struggle with that. And I have no doubt that if I was in a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, 
I, it would be something you and I would have to work on pretty hard, God. I love these first couple of verses. The one who loves discipline loves knowledge. The one who hates reproof is stupid. Okay, which always makes me kind of laugh a little bit because mom always told me not to call anybody stupid and it's in the Bible. <laughs> I digress. Uh, so I'm working on that, that constant feedback. And, and I have a, an amazing friend now who I feel safe that even if I do something wrong, she's not going to leave me, which has always been obviously my problem in relationships is people leaving, either dying, physically moving away, uh, or stopping the relationship. And she has proved over and over again, she's not going anywhere. I can mess up as pretty much as much as I want to, <laughs> not intentionally. And she has amazing grace with me and always explains things to me um, and with great feedback. And so I'm truly blessed that, that I have that. And so I'm starting to learn more and more in that relationship on how to seek that knowledge. But what made me finally stop making it about me and making it all personal and taking it personally was the fact that I wanted to be the best possible person, but now I didn't want it for me anymore. I wanted to be the best possible person for you. And the only way I was going to do that is through you and through the people you sent into my life. And so now you have blessed me with an amazing group of mentors, an amazing group of teachers, an amazing group of accountability partners that do teach me, that do advise me. Uh, and God, I just, I just ask that you continue to grow those relationships and, and to grow my understanding of, of discipline and the fact that it comes from the love that you have for us. I also like verse 18 that comes a little bit towards the end. Speaking recklessly is like the thrust of a sword, but the words of the wise bring healing. And I've had, this is so bad, I've had people in my life who've honestly out of love tried to help me but they use the wrong words and again that's my problem not theirs but the tone they use the look they use the specific words they use went through a bunch of filters and I was offended I was frustrated I was angered all the things I, I shouldn't have been because if I just stopped for a second and realized their true heart they truly didn't have a sword in their hand they weren't trying to ruin me they were trying to help me but I couldn't see past my own personal situation. So that whole words of the wise bring healing part. I think we have to be really careful about our words. So often I work really hard on thinking about the other person and what tone works for them, what words work for them, uh, even what facial gestures work for them, I have found. Uh, because if I speak from my heart, they may not be able to hear me. So I try really hard to get to the point where I understand how they can hear me, uh, that they can hear me speaking out of love. And sometimes you have to speak their love language in order to get them to hear. So verse 18, I think, goes beautifully with those first couple of verses uh, in Proverbs 12. God, uh, allow our hearts to learn this, to not make it about us, to put inside of us the desire to please you, as you promise in the Bible. And the only way we can do that is by being disciplined, by being told or wrong, maybe you should think about doing it this way, or did you think about this before you did it or before you <laughs> said it? And also allow grace to enter our mouth as the words are coming out. Ooh, that's a good one for me to practice daily. Understanding that my aggressiveness comes across in a really bad way to most people I know. So quieter words, slower speaking, not so demanding sounding. Uh, even though my intentions are good, the way it's coming across isn't right. So please help me with grace to speak the right words to provide healing because it is truly coming from a place of love. And that love has nothing to do with me. It is all about you. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.